Okay, this problem is going to kind of introduce us to the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which we'll get to in a minute. First, I want to work through this example and show you what happens as a result. We're taking the derivative of an integral, so essentially these two are going to cancel out. But let's go ahead and do this part first, working with the first fundamental theorem of calculus that we've talked about before. So I'm going to do d of d of x. I'm just going to leave that on the outside for now. I'm going to work this whole thing out and get an answer, and then I'll come back and I'll take the derivative. So first, we're going to uh, take the antiderivative. Okay, so the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Don't forget the negative there. And you're going to be going between 4 and x. Okay. So what you can th think of here is you're just doing all this inside the brackets first, then we'll take the derivative of it. Okay, so next we're going to do derivative, and then inside here, let's work that out. You get negative cosine x minus negative cosine of 4, and 4 is not a value we can get under unit circle, so we'll have to leave it as that. So we're going to get the derivative of negative cosine x plus cosine of 4. So now that we've done, gone through all this, now we're basically going to take the derivative of all this, um, but we have an x in there now, which makes sense because you couldn't have done it before with theta. So now there's an x in there, and so you can take the derivative with respect to x. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, but because you got a negative in there, that's going to give you a sine x. Now cosine of 4, that's actually going to be a constant. You could put this into your calculator, you'll get a decimal answer, and then the derivative of that is going to give you a 0. So therefore, your answer is going to be sine x. So if we take a look at this, what's happening is essentially these are canceling out because we do end up with the same function we had originally. However, you're doing something with this. You're plugging the x into the theta there as a result. So what I'm going to do is because of this result, we're going to be able to summarize. And so next we're going to talk about what the second fundamental theorem of calculus is. Okay, so here's a summary of that problem we just worked out here. Second fundamental theorem of calculus is what applies. So here's the formalities. Uh, lowercase f is continuous, has to be continuous on open interval i, containing the a, so the a is going to be the uh, constant that we have here. Then for every x in the interval, the following is true. So this is a formula that we probably don't see in your book, but it's going to work for you for the problems that you're going to work through. You're taking the derivative of an integral here, and you have a constant down below, and you have some function written on top, and here's the formula that you use in order to get the answer. You're going to put g of x in for t, and then don't forget you have to also multiply it by the derivative of g. So we'll use this on the next video. We have a couple examples that we'll show you, and we'll be using this particular formula. Um, but that's, again, second fundamental theorem of calculus involves taking the derivative of an integral. Okay, so here's when we're going to apply the second fundamental theorem of calculus because it's asking us to take a, a derivative of an integral. It doesn't matter if I know how to integrate this inside expression or not. You don't have to actually do any kind of antiderivative formulas or any work with that. You're going to apply the, the formula I just mentioned before with the second fundamental theorem of calculus that I mentioned in the previous video. The formula says what you're going to do is it doesn't matter what this bottom number can be. This bottom number can be anything. You're going to put x in there for all the t's. So this, this is the f of g of x. You're putting x in for the t's. So you're going to x squared over x squared plus 1. But then you want to multiply this by g primed. That's the derivative of the thing that you're putting in there. That's the derivative of the x. That's going to be a 1. So therefore, this is going to be your final answer. f primed is equal to x squared over x squared plus 1. Again, we have followed the formula for second fundamental theorem of calculus. We're able to do all that without even integrating this part, not necessary because we're following the formula. Essentially, a derivative will cancel out the integral and leave you with the base function on the inside, but it has to do with whatever function you have up here. So now let's take a look at another example.